It is all or nothing. Manchester United have been told that if you want to sign Joao Neves, you've got to be able to meet his entire buyout clause. Welcome to the United Health Sport. My name is Webb. I promised you an update on Joao Neves after that very exciting performance in their 4 2 victory over Finland in an international friendly. Joao Neves is the talk of town now. Remember, he's wanted by several clubs, including, of course, Manchester United. Liverpool want him, and so many other clubs. You'll see, I think, every club, I think, around Europe that needs a holding midfielder thinks about this wonder boy from Portugal. Question is, has Bruno done enough to try and convince him to join us? Well, the thing is, even for Bruno himself, he's not certain he wants to start Manchester United. How then is he going to convince this young upcoming boy to come to Manchester United? Well, let's get into this talk. Like, share, and subscribe uh, to the United of but as we keep talking, Manchester United. Now, it's a Wednesday, and I told you I'm home. Uh, where my beloved, uh, of course, my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands. I mean, it's a Wednesday. It's a women crush Wednesday. Um, this one I'm crushing on my sisters. Man, they just amazed me earlier on today. How much energy? I tell people that girls are so strong. If they combine together, as a unit, they are so strong. I've been seeing the, them this morning, throwing things left, right, and th center. I'm thinking, as a team, working as a unit, and I'm thinking there is more teamwork in this, my mother's house, from my sisters, than I've seen at Manchester United all season. If only Eric Ten Hag had these girls playing for him, United would be in the Champions League. This is how, what teamwork is all about. But who recruited these lazy players we saw at Manchester United? No teamwork, everyone working on their own. Casemiro mad because Amrabat is starting ahead of him. This one, uh, Rashford and Ganacho don't want to pass to Hoyland. Which kind of club was this? There is more teamwork in my clan than there it was at Man United all season. Ineos, we are counting on you to correct these wrongs. Anyway, speaking of teamwork, I think after watching Joao Neves playing for Portugal, he started that game. Again, I've been monitoring him to try and exactly be sure because I've said it before. I've been on record that for me, he's the first priority I would think of a holding midfielder to come and replace Casemiro. I, I wanted to be sure. I still think the same. But honestly, he started this game and what a player fighting for every ball. I mean, he has got a balance of physique. You know, he's a bit, you know, center of gravity is low. So he's firm on the ground. He's fighting for balls. He's physical, but also has got player in his feet goes forward can go as if box to box to box can go forward track back he has got energy and i'm thinking put him in the same team next play next to kobe maino and trust you me that would be something unseen we would form a midfield i think we've not seen in football for ages now i think i'm even more convinced now that is the right player to come in and replace casemiro the thing of course you can watch him i know many of you haven't watched him a lot you don't follow a lot of the portuguese league but you can watch him in the in the Euros. I'm certain he's going to be a, a key player. However young he is, he will be a key player for Portugal. Watch him in the Euros and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, the thing is, Benfica's president has made it clear that it is either you meet the 120 million euro buyout clause or forget about him. That is the clarity he has given. Now, he knows that so many clubs are interested in him and he knows he's probably the hottest holding midfielder in the world right now. And... Uh, it's a, it's it's a it's a it's it's a, a a good thing for you as a team to have you know such an exciting wonder kid wanted by all clubs. But I think overpricing him is also not good. I mean, if a kid is playing for Benfica and big clubs, I mean the real big clubs are interested in him. You don't want to fail him because I'm sure you all never will be dreaming of going either to Man United or any other club in in, in England. But saying you want 100 million pounds for him, because 120 million euros is close to 102 million pounds, is sort of trying to defeat him. Whereas it's the buyout clause, I think clubs uh, can also go below a buyout clause. It doesn't mean that because a player has a buyout clause, it, it must be that. I think if they are willing to compromise, they can be willing to compromise and, and get less. Because honestly, if they price him at about 80 million pounds, I think that's reasonable. Because he's young and he's for the future and he's good. He's already, re he's already ready to play. He's, he's ready to, um, is that English? He's already ready to, to play. What am I saying? He's ready to play. So, he's, uh, at the topmost level. So, I think for me, uh, if Man United are confident, we've been told that uh, United had half of their, of, of their th 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 that price, you know, uh, turned, turned down. 
because United had taken 60 million euros for a player who is who has whose buyout cost is 120, or probably now that that doesn't make sense. But I think if we raise it to about 70 million pounds or thereabout, I think they they should be able to listen and give us the player because in all fairness, he shouldn't be. He's not a Benfica material. Yes, Benfica, uh, you know, identified him, uh, groomed him. But it's time now for the player to be playing at the top post level. And what better than this project growing with Kobe Maino, with Alejandro Ganacho, with Rasmus Hoyland? They could be part of something we, we've been dreaming of as Manchester United. And I think it would be a huge honor for this boy uh, to, to, to get. And he also seems to be a leader. He's, not, he's young, he's 19. But I see elements uh, of Kobe in him. He, can, he has leader, leadership attributes in him, and I think that's important. You need to have a team of leaders. This Man United team of ours has got no leaders. You need leaders in the team. And I think if you're going to groom them young like this, I think it's going to be good for the team. So I, 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 I think I'm not given up. Whereas Benfica is still insisting, it's either the buyout clause or not. I think the player himself will be pushing from within. His agents will be pushing from within to ensure that they cut down on their valuation of him and we are able to sign him. And trust you me, bring him in, play him next to Kobe, with Bruno up uh, ahead of them, uh, bring back Greenwood, bring back Greenwood, put Greenwood on the right. We need a winger, but we are struggling around talking about Olise or Olis, whatever the pronunciation is, but Greenwood is the guy. Bring back Greenwood, have Ganacho flying from one side, then up top you've got Hoyland. Trust you me, this Manchester United is going to be exciting. It's going to be an exciting team to watch. For me, that's that's my prayer. So that's 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 the update on uh, Yoao Neves. So it's serious. United are interested in him, but we've got to, I mean, wait and see. We're on the mercy of one, of course, the Saudi League, because there are guys who will probably give us the money we shall use to now try go and, and sign him. But most importantly, uh, the, the club itself, Benfica, being uh, able to cut down on their valuation. Because I'll tell you, Man United is not about to spend 100 million quid on one player. It's not happening in this summer. Not this summer, not the next summer, not ever probably in, in, the, in the future years. Now, uh, so away from that, uh, the uh, Fiorentina president as well has spoken about the situation with Sofia Amrabat. Now, Amrabat has, they, they, he says they wish to keep him, but they can't keep him against his will. And they're saying Amrabat has made it clear he wants to move and stay in the, to, and play in the Premier League permanently. He wants to stay in the Premier League. So, uh, like I was saying yesterday, that Amrabat's time is now. Either Man United should clearly uh, make a decision on him. They should let him know whether they want they want him to stay or not. If not, then uh, Fiorentina will certainly be now inviting bids from other clubs. So uh, they are still there. So, but the Amrabat situation is still open. There's still a real chance that he can uh, start Man United. That's why. They have not given a statement on him and whether he's staying or not. We also don't know. Even from within, if you ask, try to ask people from within the club, they are not sure. They, they won't tell you whether they know whether Amrabat stays or not. He's still, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, kept close because they are still discussing. It all depends on Eric Ten Hag's job, whether he stays or not. So that's the situation with Sophia and Amrabat. So there's a real chance that Amrabat could stay. I think it would be an advantage. If, for example, brought in your own Neves, have Amrabat, and you have Kobe Maino. I think Amrabat forms a good part of the rotation. When we want to rest certain players, maybe uh, uh, Neves has got to rest a bit. Amrabat can come in there and play a board deputy. If you want to rest Kobe a few times, you know, you, you, because a good team has got to have depth and rotation. Of course, you don't. I'm not. I'm not saying that Kobe will be benched at any point, but he has got to be rested. I think call it resting, not being benched. There is a difference. If you need to rest them, Amrabat is that player who can come in. The fact that he has been around and you know fought through the rot and but still try to give us a good end of the season. It shows you that uh, perhaps he can be a squad player. That's why, by the way, if we are going to spend 80 million pounds, for example, on Yoao Neves, I think it would be okay for us to spend an extra 15 to get Amrabat permanently because he's not world class, but he can be a squad player. He can show he has proven that he can be a squad player, but also he has got a certain maturity to him. And like they say, better the devil you know than you don't. So than the angel you don't. So you rather stick with your Amrabat, who you, who you, whom you've seen uh, for a whole season, and he has given you a good ending, judging by his last games, and hope that he can only improve and get better going forward. But uh, again, it all depends on what now the plan is. Now, in your uh, feeling the wrath of many supporter, because people now have, are seeming to get, uh, I mean, to lose confidence in Ineos, honestly. And uh, um, I, want, I don't want to say that. I think it's early days because I see 
I think I slowly see what they're doing. And I, I can talk as a fan with my heart. I'm thinking I, I would say they are slow if I talk with my heart. But if I use my head and reason, I would understand because, I mean, the rot has been too deep and they don't want to rush into things. They have got to clear things. And this is the time they had until the, after the end of the season because there are certain things you would, they wouldn't do when the season is going on. We had an FA Cup final to play. But people are beginning to lose, uh, to lose trust in Ineos. There are trend, uh, hashtags trending of Ineos out and all. And it is all because they don't seem to be clear on where they, which direction they are taking. They don't, to be, they don't seem to be sure of what they want, to, uh, they want to do, where they want to go and how they want to get there. I want to say to say this that you first of all we are not going to let go of Ineos. That's the first thing I want to say. That in your south, in your south is not going to get them going. I mean, they did not pay. Sajim Ratcliffe did not pay 1.5, close to 1.5 billion pounds for just 27.7 percent of Man United to listen to to, to in your south in his one not even not even. Uh, in his first summer transfer window, it hasn't even started. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot now be starting to shout in your south. I think that is us being, you know, defeatist. We are defeating our own. It's not progressive. I think we can question what they are doing. Like I've questioned their lack of direction and proper strategy. Their strategy is questionable. It's not clear. But time will always vindicate. Yeah? Time will always vindicate. I think it's only right for us to give them time to see things happen. Let us see what they do. This summer is going to happen. Certainly, they are not going to keep quiet about Eric Ten Hag forever. They will certainly come out and give their, opos their position on him. And we shall then see what will happen after that. And then next season, we will we'll be there to judge. We will see clearly whether there is progress or not. And that's when we can now start questioning them. Of course, even now we can question them for things we don't seem to think are, are going right. But going in your south now for me is bringing the wrong energy at the wrong time. And it's not taking us anywhere. I think now more than ever, we've got to rally behind and support Ineos. And support doesn't mean just keeping quiet and, you know, like acting like fools. We, support can also be in terms of uh, criticizing where, where, where you've got to. It's okay for us to come out and criticize we've got to, because we've got every right to criticize as supporters of the team. But saying in your south, in your south, I think is immature. It's very immature. And I, I want to be a part of that. So, guys... Put your heads right and let's back the team now more than ever as we head into this summer transfer window. My name is Webb. This is the United Health Sport. Let me know whether you think Man United, by any chance, if we land on the money, we should be spending 100 million pounds, 102 million pounds, because that's the buyout clause of your own Neves. Do you think we should be spending it on him? Because we know for a fact we need him as the replacement for Casemiro. But at what cost? That's my question for you. Drop down in the comment section and let me know what you think.